there's some dudes in my glassing spot this morning. I'm just kidding. I'm out here with the PN Wild Boys, Jeff, Zach, and Bob. Out here in their neck of the woods looking for a bear. <sighs> Don't mind my lip. I got bruised the other day from this and it's kind of a odd spot on the lip. No, we're nine and one. No, that was it was nine and one before last night's game. Not what they were saying on the broadcast. Yeah. So after last night's win we're ten and zero. We have service right here now. Check. Morning. Morning. <laughs> All right, this morning we got to our glassing knob and perched up there. Didn't really see much at first. We spotted some pretty nice mule deer bucks way down at the bottom and then just watched them feed around this morning. And about 30 minutes after we spotted those bucks, Jeff looked way up the basin and he spotted a nice dark chocolate bear we looked at him for a little bit maybe like 10 minutes 15 minutes he looked like a good bear Jeff spotted him so we're all going after Jeff's bear so we got like I don't know 1500 feet to descend and then like a thousand feet to ascend into the basin that that bear is in. And hopefully he's still there. He's been milling around really slowly. So I don't think, we don't think he's gonna be very far. He should be in there. So it might take us about half an hour to get down to the bottom. And then it might take us two hours to scale up that side because it's steep and a bunch of deadfall. Bear is falling off. Perfect. Bear is right up here. He just crested over that ridge line. Jeff's gonna get set up right on this knob. Try to make this happen if he gets close. He's going up. Oh, I think I see him. He's going up above the rocks right now. Oh, I see him clear eye. Mm -hmm. He's behind us. He's coming out. He's coming out right there. 619. That's 620? Yeah, 620. 12.5. You guys ready to rock? I'm ready to roll whenever.
Oh my god. <laughs> He's a big boy. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a good shot, guys. He's gonna rip that stump up. Eating berries now. I lost him. He's still there, right to the left of that white rock. He's literally standing and feeding. Oh, he's going to town on that stump. Yeah, I readjusted my rear rest and it made me too. Okay, I'm on him. You guys ready? Yeah, you're ready. Hi, right over him. He's going down to the left. Keep on him. Yep, he's going back to the left we saw him on. What's on my range? Give me a second. Hurry, 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 hurry. 625. 625? Yep, 625. I'm 640. On. Yeah, I'm on. He's slowing down. He's going up. He's walking right into the wide open of that chute. Wide open. He's just, he's moving. He's moving. No, he's, he's not moving fast. He's chilling, dude. Still does up in that chute. Yep, he's just casually strolling to the right. 662. I ain't moving. This is killing me. He stopped. Yeah, he just stopped. In the broad, in the broad side? Yep, yeah. right in the wide chute. Oh, I might be able to see that. He's in the wide open. I don't know where he's at. To the right, Zach. He's in, he's in the very right chute now. The right chute now. I need him to come down 100 yards. But if he makes it over, where'd that hunter go? He just went into some white dead trees. He's yeah, crested down over. Down to the right. Update is we all probably had an hour-ish or so nap, and then I was uh, awoken by Bob saying, bear, I got a bear. So then I'd oh, boogie man. on over and yeah. sit next to Bob, and unfortunately Bob's looking at an angle of <laughs> about 90 you degrees. You can only see it by laying this is how he looked and looking up. <laughs> the only reason I saw that is because I woke up from a nap and just put my binos straight up. <laughs> Uh, there's a bear at the top and of And I was mountain. shaking in my boots when I saw his angle of the binoculars. And uh, sure, as, sure as anything up there, there is a nice jet black just munching away up there. And then Mr. Samong behind the camera there saw another bear about three drainages over. And it just happened to be with Sal the cub. But that was probably the prettiest bear of the day was Samong's Sal. So now our efforts are focused back on Bob's bear. And we're just, he is just mentally going down the checklist of what he wants to do. No one wants to go with him, just to be honest. 
<laughs> um, but I'm sure any of us would. Uh, it's just uh, you, you just never know. The, the bear is realistically probably 1,600 feet straight up in less than a half a mile. Very, very, very steep country. Um, but the bear's up there, and, and the bear's content, so you just never know. He's not really going to get away, I don't think. Anyway, anything he does, we're going to be able to keep sights on him. If he comes down, if he goes left, right, or up, we're going to be able to see him. So really just we're in the planning stage of our attack mode. This is what happens when you stargaze for bears. <laughs> yeah, <yes. laughs> Find them on Mars. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. Because it got the wet, it stayed very moister. Where's the cub? So far up there. You're not going to? I don't know.
He's tiny. He's tiny. Are you sure? He's you not. Want, he's pretty small, isn't he? He is. I don't want to shoot him. Just, well, he's freaking tiny. Uh. <laughs> What's your call? He's you really that? He's really small. I'm not shooting it. I decided don't shoot that. I'm not shooting that actually. Is this the right bear? Yeah. Oh, dude, he's so small. I'm proud of myself. Is that really him? It's gotta be. <laughs> so me and Bob. Just put on one heck of a death stock <laughs> just to figure out that this bear is tiny, I like mean, borderline cub. Yeah. Like he was with his mom last I got him a hundred yards right here. I can shoot him in the head. It's just <laughs> through the scope. It's like, he did it's look too dark. small. He didn't, he has that. God, it's freaking steep. It is so steep. He has that fuzzy cub hair on him. Yep. That was freaking awesome. Thanks for coming up here with dude, me. <laughs> Jeff and Zach are way at the bottom. Okay, it doesn't look far, but dude, it is so steep. We are standing, like look. <laughs> I can't let go of this because I'm going backwards. <laughs> it is so steep. You are. Dude, my left, my right calf is burning because it's so steep. Let's just watch him. I mean, if that thing was right off the road, maybe, but it's just. <laughs> Yeah, we got that. I don't want to deal with that little thing. No. <laughs> Look at him. He didn't care. Cool to watch. Dude, we deserve a show. Oh, he's so small. So small. He's chilling, man. That's too funny. Awesome stock, though, man. Dude, that he, was so much fun. He looked way bigger. Seriously. Didn't they even message? That's a good bear. <laughs> They must have been looking at a different bear. They're probably down there. Why isn't he shooting? They gotta see him. Oh, I'll load my rifle. Here we go, starting our descent. This is sketchier than the ascent. I'm gonna let Bob go a little bit of ways before I follow him. That way, if I tumble, I don't take him with me. to literally backwards rock climb. If it's not good, then we'll just go back lower. Or just literally sit on your butt. Should be.
Now rock's going. Way down the bottom. Maybe that's the shortcut. Just tumble. This is why these bears are up here. Scrubbing away on these huckleberries. The good thing about coming up after them is even though you don't shoot one, you get yourself a snack. It's like a treat. Back to the creek. Do they not see it? I was like, that must be crazy steep. They can't see it. <laughs> I got it on the gun and I started sliding like down. This. It looked that steep. I had to grip the rock and like yeah. rest it on my hand so I wouldn't slide down the hill. It's good. Hey, I know. Right there, right there, right there, right there. On the log. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Good. Yep. Grab the rifle. Let's go. Hold on. I need to keep a look at him. I can't tell. I can't. Let's just look at him. Let's get. Let's let him get out. Yeah, let's just let him get out. Oh, I see something moving in the bushes. Yeah, I can see the chocolate. I can't see the black one. They're not cubs, though. There's no, no way. There's no way that's a cub. When I saw them both walking, they were both large bears. And, the, and the, dude, they're not even acting like they're together. Like they're they're doing their own thing right now. The cub is like that one up there. Kill the camera. Let me get you a lunch. No, I'm just gonna dry fire first. Three thirty nine, Simone. We're gonna go to four and a click. Four and a click. Four and a click. Okay. Okay. Push it back. Right here. It doesn't like to feed, so be careful with it. We killed two right here. We're going out the bottom. Hey, Sai. What's up? So, just give me a thumbs up when you're ready to shoot. Okay, I will. No, I don't know where they are. That's a good bear, dude. The where black is out to the top right of it now. The, the jet, shoot the, shoot the, shoot the dude, damn I don't know where they are. Huh? I don't know where they are. Oh, I see them. He's in the shade. Okay. I'm, I'm recording, so whenever. You, are you on that one? I'm on the chocolate. The That's the chocolate facing left? Yep. Yes. That's him, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, I'm sending it. Okay. Okay. Drilled Dumped him, baby. Drilled him. You drilled him. Get on the gun, Zach. Get on the gun. I saw him coming down that log. Okay, I see him. Oh yeah, he's right down low. He's to the left. Do you he's see him, left. Jeff? I mean, Zach? 
He is to the left of where Simongius was. He's in the brush. He can't see right now. He's coming back. And just like that, we are back in my studio. And for the second year in a row, I have a notched bear tag without a bear to show for it. So yes, uh, you heard me right. We never recover the bear I shot and hit um, on this hunt. And so that's why I wanted to film this last segment to give you more context as to what happened on this hunt. And uh, this was just a very crazy and eventful day of hunting. And so there's so much to cover, but the primary uh, point or topic I want to touch on is the bear eye shot. Um, if you want to learn more about the whole context of this hunt, I actually recorded a podcast with the PN Wild crew and the podcast is actually live on the PN Wild podcast. I kind of want to go through some context that way it fills you guys in as to what happened and why it happened and what we should have done differently so just to go to, back to the very start it's all four of us me zach bob and jeff and we are starting the morning off at the very top of this mountain and we are glassing across this huge basin into like just a lot of country all four of us brought our own rifles. So I had my own rifle, Jeff had his own rifle, Zach and Bob, they both had their own rifles. All four of us brought our own rifles on this hunt. So because we were glassing from this knob, Jeff was the one who spotted the first bear of the day. And it was so far out that we were like, we have to drop just to get to the creek bottom. And then we have to scale up almost 2000 feet just to get into the basin where that bear that Jeff spotted was in. And so just by looking at the country that we were going to have to go down and up in that moment we were like we need to dump as much weight as possible so that when we do kill this bear that jeff spotted we can come out with lighter loads and not uh basically kill ourselves with having too much gear right with that conversation i dropped my rifle zach dropped his rifle bob dropped his rifle we dropped all our spotting scopes we dropped a lot of weight and basically we all went in with the mindset that only jeff is going to shoot so because jeff spotted the bear he's the shooter and since he's the shooter he's obviously going to take his rifle because he's the most comfortable with his rifle so the other three of us me zach and uh, bob we leave our rifles at the top of this ridge mountain i should say so we go down we go up and obviously jeff shoots he misses his bear and uh, again so at this point all four of us are pretty much just sharing jeff's rifle Obviously, we um, went on a stock after Bob's bear. We, me and Bob got to within 100 yards. We ended up passing it because he was way smaller. The reason why me and Bob found out that this bear was so small after we did our stock was because, again, we had left all of our spotting scopes at our initial glassing location, which is like over 2,000 feet of elevation uh, up our mountain, right? So because we didn't have any, any spotting scopes, we couldn't get a super good look at this bear. So we were just kind of looking at the camera screen and even at that range i mean you're looking at like a thousand yards with a camera and so the camera just didn't do too much justice as to letting us gauge the size of this bear so we found out that that bear was too small after we already did a death hike to basically where that bear was so after we had come back down me and bob had come back down as we were crossing the creek back to where jeff and zach were sitting i actually dropped my camera in the creek and so because it dropped in the creek, my camera was no longer functioning. I pulled out the SD card. Luckily, all the files were safe. That's why you had a video to watch. But from that point on, I could not film with my camcorder anymore. So all I had was my little GoPro and uh, basically whatever cameras the PN Wild crew had. And so me and Bob had just gone back to where Jeff and Zach were. We get back and I'm talking to Jeff. Jeff is sitting down. I'm standing up and I'm trying to air out my camera and as I'm airing out my camera, I'm almost like complaining to Jeff, like the fact that there are so many ripe berries by the creek, our elevation right then and there, and there are no bears at the creek, but there are bears at the very top of the mountain where the huckleberries are relatively scarce. It made absolutely no sense to me. So I was kind of venting to Jeff a little bit of frustration of how we just did a death hike for a small bear and where the bears were hanging out, it just didn't match up with where the huckleberries were. And so as soon as I say that one sentence to Jeff, I look across the creek, like 400 yards away on this big white log. I spot the silhouette of a bear 
uh, walking on that white log. And immediately I'm like, oh my goodness, like there's a bear right there, like 400 yards away. We look at this log and this bear had now duplicated into two bears. Okay, so there's no longer one bear, there's now two bears. And these are two like 175, 180 pound bears, if we had to guess, walking in front of one another on a white log. And our first thought was, it's a sound of cub. But just as fast as that thought came in our mind, it, we also threw it out the window because like it wasn't a big bear with a small cub sized bear. It was just two big adult bears. The only time bears, adult bears are really together is when it's breeding season, which for black bears, breeding occurs in May and June. This is August. And so we're all kind of thrown back a little bit. We're all like, is that really a sound in cub or is that just coincidentally two adult bears that just so happen to be hanging out together? Long story short, it's just two adult bears, like 180-ish pounds, if we had to guess, maybe 200 pounds, just hanging out together. And so immediately we could tell one's chocolate, one's black. We looked at these bears for probably half an hour and we just never had a clear shot because they kept weaving in uh, the tall huckleberry brush, right? Like we'd see them and then they would disappear. I wouldn't have enough time to get a shot off. And uh, when I would see the bear, Zach who was on the camera, wouldn't have him on camera. And when Zach would have him on camera, I wouldn't have a shot. All four of us had tags. And again, we're only sharing one rifle. We're all shooting Jeff's uh, seven SOM, which is a short action ultra mag. It's a big gun. Uh, it's a relatively big cartridge. And so because we're only sharing one gun and there's two adult bears, the idea was that I'm going to shoot my bear. I'm going to dump him and I'm going to swap positions with Zach and I'm going to go to the camera and Zach's going to get on the gun and he's going to shoot the second bear. This is where you don't get greedy. Eventually the two bears, they kind of work their way out of the huckleberry brush. I have the chocolate bear uh, broadside and the jet black is just like five yards above this chocolate bear. And I, when I was looking through the scope, I never even recall seeing this jet black. I was just so focused on this chocolate bear. And so now I want to point you guys to the camera and we can dissect this together. So again, just look at the two bears. Like they're not really giant bears, but they're also just not cubs, right? Like these are just two medium sized bears and they're just hanging out together for whatever reason. And you can see just how thick this brush is. And so after a while, they finally come out, or at least the chocolate finally comes out, and I'm gonna skip to it. So right here, you can see them. Again, this is a much better view. So again, not a giant bear, and not a giant bear for the jet black either. Just two medium-sized bears, not a sound of cub, just two medium-sized bears. And at this point, I'm like, I have the chocolate bear, and he's in the open, and Zach's like, I'm on both of them. So at this point, I'm basically saying I'm full send, on this chocolate bear. And so this chocolate bear is obviously grubbing away at huckleberries and I'm like, okay, this is where it's gonna get happy. And I shoot and immediately this bear just rolls. My goal was I'm gonna break the shoulder, dump him on the spot and call it good. Well, as soon as my shot rings out, uh, Jeff who's on the by nose says dumped him. Zach who is Filming this bear says drill them. I shoot, gun kicks up, I get back on the bear and I just see two paws up in the air. And I'm just like, all three of us in unanimous agreement just said that I have officially killed this bear. Because of that, we don't really see this bear get up and run off. We just think that he's dead right there. This is our mistake. Instead of looking at the bear I just shot and confirming that he was dead, we immediately start a roulette and I get off the gun, I go to the camera, Zach gets off the camera and Zach comes to the gun. And now we're focused on the jet black because now the jet black had actually run up into the open uh, huckleberry bushes. This was our mistake because it's so open that if we had paid attention to where my bear was running, he ran right across the wide open and we missed it because we were focused on this jet black bear that we that Zach wanted to shoot. So the context now to my shot was the bear was broadside, but because of how his head was eating when I shot, 
um, he was slightly quartering to me. And I noticed that he was quartering to me when I was looking through the scope. Um, but the reason why I didn't really care about it was because, again, I'm shooting Jeff's 7 Psalm, which is not a small gun. And I just said, 350 yards, I'm going to break that shoulder and just dump him on the spot. And so when I shot, the gun felt good. And he dropped on the spot, which in my head, I'm like, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to drop on the spot. I did a shoulder shot. He dropped exactly how a bear should drop if you hit him in the shoulder. Zach said I drilled him. Jeff said I uh, dumped him. And so we were all good. Well, it turns out that just by looking back at the footage of my shot, I think what happened is I just hit high and a little bit forward in that quote unquote no man's land I don't really know if a no man's land really exists but just by experience I'm going to go ahead and say that the no man's land existed where it's just like you're just above all the organs and you're just below the spine and all you do is just punch through meat and so if we try to um, stop this footage here he's quartering to me So if you could see smoke right here, which is where my arrow is, is pretty much the general area where I hit this bear, which it's not a good shot. Okay. It just was not a good shot. Like that's all I have to say. It's just that in the instance when everything is happening in real life, everything happens so fast, you don't get to pause videos like this. All you see is a Boom, gun goes off, bear reacts, and you make your judgment off of that split second whether or not that was a good shot or not. In the moment, all of our judgment, we said, was a dead bear. So anyway, after the shot goes off, we spend like 30 minutes trying to get Zach on this jet black, and eventually this jet black disappears. We never see it again. And so we wait another 30 minutes, and then uh, that's when we actually go out and we actually start to track my bear or try to find my bear. How we did it is uh, we had Zach stay back on our side where we shot from. That way, if we go into the thick brush and uh, the chocolate or the jet black runs out, he can shoot them both, right? Because at this point, we didn't know if my chocolate was dead or not. So, for example, if I did happen to kill my chocolate bear, but I was the one who stayed back and the jet black ran out, I could not have shot it because I've already tagged or I would think that my chocolate is dead. So that's why we had Zach stay back because regardless of which bear that runs out, Zach can technically shoot either one. So we had Zach stay back and it was me, Jeff, and Bob that went in after uh, my bear. So I eventually make it to the spot where my bear was standing when uh, I shot it and immediately right on impact, the spot where the bear was when I shot him, we found blood on both sides. So it was, it was an obvious pass through. We found blood on the left side and we found blood on the right side. And uh, long story short, the blood was not the greatest. We just kind of uh, followed our best through all that thick brush. And the blood was just very, very trickly. Meaning you would find like a couple specks here and then you would lose blood and then you'd have to like kind of just um, V your way around and then you'd find like another speck of blood. So after about 500 yards of just specks of blood through Huckleberry brush like this, we come across a big wide uh, open meadow. It's just grass. And in this meadow is a big white log laying across it. And this bear that I shot actually ended up going up on this white log and walked across this white log and hopped off the white log and then disappeared into dark timber. The moment I came across this white log and I realized that there was blood on this white log, that's when my hopes of finding this bear went from like 95 to like a 2%. The reason why I lost hope is because if we go back to my shot intention, my goal was to break the shoulder. If I broke the shoulder and my bullet hit where I intended it for it to hit, this bear should not be able to use its left arm or its left shoulder at all. But the fact that it was able to get onto this white log and walk across this white log with all four legs, that's when I realized I did not hit where I wanted to hit because his left arm is working. Like he's still conscious enough to use his left arm to walk across this white log when in my heart I said that that left arm should no longer be working. That was the first and pivotal point in our uh, tracking job where it dawned on me I did not hit where I wanted it to hit. I did not break that shoulder. I hit close to it 
but I didn't break the shoulder to the point where that bear was no longer uh, able to use that shoulder. So after this bear uh, goes across this white log, he hops off it and he goes for like another 50 yards of um, like this type of brush that you see on the screen right now. And again, we're on just like drops of blood, like, like super hard to see drops of blood. He goes about another 40 yards and we lose blood. We don't have any more signs of blood. And another 100 yards from where we were at that point is just big dark timber and the brush is taller than you and you're basically just using both your arms to maneuver into the dark brush. So we get over there and at this point, we just have no idea where this bear went and it was getting dark. And by the time we got to the dark timber, from where we had shot him, it was already like over half a mile. And so it was nearly half a mile of just specks of blood and then like that last 0.1, maybe 0 0.05 miles of uh, open meadow before it hits the timber, we didn't have any blood and we just knew that that bear went into the dark timber because that's where he was headed anyway. I think all four of us just agreed that it, had I hit where I hit, that bear would not have been able to run half a mile and he would not have made it out of uh, that huckleberry patch. And uh, again, we ran out of time, so we had to uh, come back out. I'm still honestly baffled with the way it turned out because all four of us in the moment, we thought we killed them. Me, Zach, and Jeff, we all had eyes on the bears when my shot rang out. We all said he, he died when uh, he dropped. Bob, who wasn't even looking at the bear, Bob was actually just filming the three of us. And even Bob, uh, who was not, not even looking at the bear, Thought it was a dead bear just because he heard that thwack when I hit that bear and I came back home and I sent this clip just the shot to like 25 people and all 25 people basically said the same thing nice shot congratulations I should have killed that bear 350 yards like that's that's ultimately a chip shot nonetheless bear tag number one is notched it just doesn't sit right with me that I would hit a bear like that and uh, not notch my tag. And so uh, my tag is going on that bear. I don't think that bear is dead. Yeah, nonetheless, that's basically just a little bit more context behind this bear that I shot and uh, it didn't pan out. But I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. And I don't know, I learn from it and be better. So with that said, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, hopefully the next time you see me and I shoot something, we get to touch it.